Okay, here we are again. Uh, this time I'm not gonna screw around with anything. Let's bring up the controls display. Why is it showing my brakes are on? Is it because they're locked on? If I press... Okay. What I've got going on, because I don't have an analog access to use for the brake, is I've got my left toe brake assigned to the brake handle. And it does... turns out it, the differential does work, but only for the first little bit of travel, and then it goes full... full brake. If you get both right at the middle I I guess I can believe that here's the thing though if you use an analog axe or a, a switch axis oh god now it's conflicting with the analog axis because the bottom end is broken okay there we go yeah oh no it's still boy there's not much the Spitfire doesn't do this. This is a bug in the Spitfire that if you hold down the axis with a with a switch, you will not see the uh, the brake amounts move. Anyway, we will uh, control extents: full left, full right, full back, full forward. That was my problem last time. I don't know why I checked it before I took off, but. Oh, and throttle, full, back. What's this point here? It's not, is there web? Anyway, I've got it set to not stop me, so I don't need to press anything to go through the detent. If that is a web detent. I'll leave this ugly thing up. Okay. We turn on this crazy power switch. We turn our fuel cocks to the outer tanks. Fuel pressurization on. Uh, I don't know which engine to start first. We'll go with left. Open you, open you, and we need to tell Buddy outside to find. So he's not really running a starter, he's pumping a primer pump, presumably. Which is awkward. I never knew that about the spit. Okay. Clear prop. Booster coils. And it should come alive. There it is. And then it wants to... That's good. That was a good start. Okay, same thing for the other one. These covers pop up on, the, on their own. I don't like that. Clear prop. Oh, I always forget the mags. You see, and now these covers automatically put themselves back, making me have to do it again. I just found out what the booster coils do. They make a kind of continuous spark. Rather than the uh, distinct individual sparks that the magneto provides at exactly the right time, it just gives you a mess of sparks. There's still a distributor which keeps them from happening when the piston's on its way up, I guess. Nav lights, UV lights, uh, pedo heat, why not? I don't know about this fuel pump. We don't seem to need it. Gun sight power, do do do. Don't need anything over here. Radio is on. Oh, and before steam starts coming out of radiators. Now this is what happened last time is even though my coolant temps are really low, 
It happened about 60 last time, or maybe 80, but well below 100. I had steam bursting out of my uh, left eye. Hey, 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 hey! Stop. Okay. Now there's one of those jumps in throttle speed that it's so touchy at the bottom end. And also it's... My, is it my throttle axis that has that jump there? I've just got no resolution. It just wants to go from nothing to too much. Anyway, close enough. It's supposed to be 1200 or 13. Close the window. I never realized you had to lean over this far for the gun sight. There's some options to help that, but with track IR, I'm not using them. It's just keep my head centered and lean over when I need to. But yeah, leaning over in the middle of a dogfight while you're under G, that's interesting. This plane was never designed to be a f whoa, fighter. Hello. I mean, the aerobatics online. Uh, the channel server. Okay, what else am I missing? Nothing. I guess we can do some taxiing. So, wind is towards us this way. So we'll take off kind of diagonally across the field here. Just about no rudder authority at all without the brakes. Like, just nothing. Maybe there's the tiniest bit. Left, left, left. No, nothing. Right, right, right. We get a little bit of right, but almost nothing left. Okay, we're going. Building up some speed here. Just fix that axis so it should settle down, but it's not. The, uh, my toe, whoa. My toe brake as handbrake axis. And if that sounds awkward, it is. Come on. You can do it. Brakes are locked. Okay, trim. So it defaults to. That's our track of hair doesn't want to let you look here. Of course, there's, they put a wire right in front of the display you need to see. They couldn't have wrapped that behind. If this was my plane, I would take this piece of wire. And, now, here, right there. What made the throttle jump? No idea. Just nothing. I do have a slightly flaky throttle. Axis that I need to clean up. Um, okay. 
So why is it slightly nose trim forward anyway? Anyway, I'm gonna need a lot because I've had trouble with this. So, oh look! Now, uh, what? How come every time I pull back, I'm getting a different ex extent on the y-axis? Oh, and there's the smoke, even though my radiators are going on. What am I doing wrong? There's nothing should be causing this to happen. We're well below boiling. The oil isn't uh, up to where it should be yet. Oil should be 40 for takeoff or higher. And uh, yeah, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, not 70. Got my radiators opened. Maybe that's a bug. Doesn't seem to affect the engine any. I haven't had one conk out of me yet. Okay, we're not going to 40 yet, but. Uh, There's just nowhere between too much throttle and too little. You can't get to where you need to be. Could be my axis, but a lot of other people are making similar complaints, so I'm not sure. Oh, and uh, trim right for takeoff. And... Uh, and run trim is centered however I've been finding I have to trim right to keep it level don't know why so I was talking about this in the other video which I don't know if I'll share what's up with the Spitfire and now uh, the Mosquito artificial horizon the DCS manual says something about obviously it's a gyro and it wants to maintain its angle but it's now drifted due to my driving around on the ground here and there's no way to cage it. There's no buttons, there's no nothing. And it said something about a pendulum. It's like, is that pendulum ever going to gradually move this towards there? Because once I start flying, this will actually level out. And I don't know what explains that. Anyway, the Spitfire does that too. I'm also unhappy with the Spitfire. I always have been. Okay. I didn't put my uh, prop pitches forward. That's okay. I wonder if that was affecting my idle speed. Also wonder if that was affecting my... Uh, why is it only that engine that brews up? It might have been the prop pitch that was causing that. Anyway, prop pitch is forward now. Stick back. Throttle, here we go. Back. Uh 
top speed back. Can I still make him smoke? No. Yeah, so, yeah, stick is pretty much centered, but it really wants to go nose high. Trimming forward, even though I was already trimmed forward. Okay. So, I'm trimmed this far forward now, which is ridiculous. As you can see on the control display, this just stick is just a little far forward, which should even be countering the amount I need to trim, but it's not. Oh, I forgot to stop my wheels before putting the... Ah, they stopped anyway. But yeah, now here's... Rudder trim, back to center, now we have airspeed. Step on the ball. Oh, how I wish they just had a ball in these. What's wrong with the British? And yeah, it wants to roll to the left. Even though my stick is totally centered, so it's not some stick calibration issue. It wants a whole bunch of right aileron trim to stay level. Okay. Cruising settings. I guess it's a little bit better than the last flight. It's just crazy touchy. And I've got huge curves set. If you don't believe me. Forty. Curves of forty. Look at that. And uh, trust me, it's the same thing on the X axis. And look at this. There's reflections baked onto the windows the old way, even though we have new reflection technology. It's, it's like it's like one hand doesn't know what the other is doing. They have a new way to do things, and yet we paid someone to do it the old wrong way. Fuck ED. What is wrong with you people? Russia, I know. Okay, I guess we can get rid of that. Ugly display. And yeah, you gotta lean all the way over almost to your armrest, not quite. Over your leg though. It's uh the engines pop out of you pull any negative G's. Like so. They don't like that. That's realistic as far as I know, although it might be a little too sensitive. Hard to say. Also, it's just really hard to keep from nosing forward with the controls this touchy. Now, if I had my force feedback turned on, this thing would be unflyable just like the Spitfire is. Force feedback has issues uh, with my Logitech force feedback stick in almost every plane, but usually it's just a trim offset. Sometimes you can counter for it with the planes trim, other times you can't. And depending on that, I'll choose to use force feedback or not, which is a major drag because you have to leave the mission, exit the server, uh, change that setting, and then you actually have to restart the game because it won't uh, reset the uh, force feedback spring force unless you restart the game.
Oh, yeah, just barely touched with it. It is so barely touchy. It will trim out. I'm hands off now. But I can't walk away and grab a drink or something. I can in the P47. It'll trim out stable enough. Now, the P47 may be a more naturally stable airframe than this. Still, it's... It's like... The difference between balancing a ball at the bottom of a valley or on top of a hill. And uh, the only two warbirds that have this issue are coincidentally the only two British warbirds, the Spitfire and the mos now the Mosquito. There's Dover Castle, Dover, Port of Dover. And uh, a chain home station radar, early radar. Yeah, so they've got, like, once again, we have this new reflection technology that's great, and yet we have these old reflections baked onto the glass. So yeah, it flies, but it's really high maintenance. Now, it doesn't, it's hardly got any wing dihedral. A couple degrees, maybe. Yeah, it's not quite as flat as I thought. Yeah, so it should want to be stable, but at least in the roll axis. But it's not, and it's needing a whole bunch of uh, aileron trim to counteract something. I don't know if there's a weight issue or what. It shouldn't be the props. Usually uh, rudder trim is all you need to counteract prop, prop torque. Fortunately, one correct thing they did is, even though there's no controls, when you switch to the uh, navigator position, you can still fly. You can still you can still move all the pilot's controls. So that's one way to deal with it. I've also uh, gone for a ride now in the observer position. As expected, you can't really do anything. Although I was able to open the bomb doors, so... You, you can kind of do some of the things that this person would have done. His main role was navigator and uh, wireless operator as well. As you can see, he's got a big radio set back here. How do I... where is it? There. A couple of them. So he'd work all that stuff and work on navigation. Target spotting. And uh, if this is a night fighter, oh, I hope they give us a night fighter variant someday. Um, he would also be the radar operator and would guide the whole intercept. Yeah, look at all the forward trim. Two notches forward just to fly straight and level. And again, it's not my stick. My, my stick's already a bit forward. Now I came to this position because I wanted to look at the fuel gauges and I see I can't. I cannot put my head forward enough 
to see stuff that it's my job to see. That's a problem, ED. Fix that, please, ASAP. I realize there's only so much room. Yeah, I kind of a track iron problem. I'm not sure what you should do about that. Maybe maybe we need a button to uh, move his entire body forward or something. How, how would he look at it? Would he have to get out of his seat and look forward? Put his... I guess I can't put his head on the pilot's shoulder because the armor plate's there. Yeah, there's the pilot's shoulder. Yeah. Okay, so you can't see the fuel gauges from the navigator position. And uh, you have to zoom on them to see them from the pilot position. So we are... take... whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I do like that the fuel gauges go nuts with G's. That's good. Um, the airspeed indicator also likes to go nuts with an angle of attack. And I can believe that, although it might be a little extreme. Uh, the RPM or yeah, I like that those bounce around. All the other warbirds, they seem very static and dead, so that's actually an improvement. Points there, ED. Not a lot. A few. Am I happy I pre-ordered this? No, not really. Someone told me that they're not offering the uh, free trial deal on this, which seems to be going back on a promise that didn't take them long. Now, I get why they wouldn't want to when they release a uh, product in such a sorry condition as this. But still, they promised... Uh, we would, and they're reneging. Liars. Bunch of fucking pathological liars. And, you know, you'd think, ah, it's just a Russian thing. But they're owned by a Brit, Nick. What's his excuse? Aside from being a fucking rich kid. Also, Wags. You're supposed to be one of us. Well, from over here in the free world, North America. Why don't you straighten them the fuck out? Explain to them that customers here have a expectation of satisfaction. Looks like there's an aircraft carrier out there. Let's go visit it. Oh, and yeah, we're like 100 degrees on the radiators, which seems it's right on the edge of boiling over. Yet, I'm at uh, totally relaxed cruise settings here. If I go any lower on the throttle, it'll, uh, it'll start beeping at me, which I assume means the generator doesn't isn't working. Now, I thought this light over here was supposed to do the same thing, but this light right there, which apparently is on all the time in a Mosquito, even if you haven't turned any switches on. They just didn't care. It doesn't drain the battery fast enough to matter. Anyway, we'll keep the boost right on 8, because anything below that starts to beep at me. And, uh, yeah, 26 and a half on the RPM. This is, uh, this is cruise setting, at least according to what Sunstag, or whatever his name is, said.
here's my other issue. It might not... Eh, it's hard to say. But the taper of uh, the rear of the nacelles doesn't look narrow enough. It's close, but especially... Yeah. Looks really ugly, actually. The real one has nice smooth lines back there. They added those extensions uh, exactly because they were getting some uh, negative performance. They pretty much have to act like another couple of vertical stabilizers. But again, they look a lot, a lot thicker here. Just the trailing edge of the missiles. The rest of the visual model looks okay, but it's not kind of the great leap forward that the P-47 was. Boy, it's loud out here. Whoa, whoa. Once again, it's getting heavy on the left wing. Have to add more right trim. Like, uh, are we only taking fuel from the left, maybe? Both tanks show the same. This is a modern aircraft carrier. Someone's placed on this server. Most of this map is, uh, well, all of this map is designed to look like a World War II, late World War II era channel. But that doesn't mean you can't stick a modern aircraft carrier in. doing 300 miles an hour mm -hmm. whoa There's, we're getting some mini lags or micro stutters or I don't know what you want to call them but little tiny freezes seems like it might have something to do with the uh, level of detail system because I got some right as I was coming into the uh, close to the carrier here. or it could be uh, things happening on the server calculating AIs people joining leaving they have a history of those things causing short little stutters in the frame rate as well what is my frame rate? 24, that's about average for this map. So that's good. This uh, certain cockpits, like the uh, new A10C and the, uh, the Tomcat, seem to put me over a VRAM limit and uh, give me a noticeable hit on frame rate. 24 is just barely flyable. And if I get if I don't look at uh, terrain, if I look up here and get up into the high 30s, 37, 35, oh boy. slow again, 200 miles an hour. I need to trim right. On the rudder. Now I'm back to takeoff trim. What is going on? And yet the rudder is centered. 
Oh, and I didn't command that at all. That was just the slightest touch of the stick. The amounts I'm moving the stick, like this is it. Out of out of all that range, all this stuff I'm doing just with these tiny little stick movements. Let's go look at stuff on the beach. I wish the windshield wiper worked, but it doesn't seem to yet. We have a rheostat for it over here. But unless there's another switch for it somewhere I'm not aware of, I don't think it works. I, we would probably never really need it other than a takeoff. Once you get going, the airspeed clears your windscreen for you. Whether that's accurate in this aircraft or not, I don't know, but it happens in all DCS aircraft. I recently found out these long things sticking out in the water are called groins. They're there to stop beach erosion. I thought they might also stop riptides for swimmers. But that doesn't seem to be their main purpose, if it's a purpose at all. Got some train tracks over there, but it looks like uh, there's no more trains unless we script them now. At least. So we're told, trains now sync in multiplayer, so we can finally add them to the game. So if that means we lose them as... Yeah, he's got no civilian traffic set in the server either, so that would do it. You would see the occasional car driving along these roads if civilian traffic was turned on. Again, I, I, all this uh, porpoising I'm doing is pretty much uncommanded. It's just within the noise floor of my joystick is enough to have this thing flying all over the place. I do need to take my joystick apart and clean the pots, but I don't have these issues in any other plane except for the Spitfire, so that tells me something. Nice forward view on this plane. This bar is a little bit in the way. You can see that becoming a problem, particularly during a dogfight, because a lot of the time when you're chasing someone, he's turning, you're turning, he's going to be up here. Sometimes he'll be there, but, but yeah, you usually have a canopy bow there anyway, so it's not that bad. cliffs. Yeah, there's a train tunnel. Is there actually a train tunnel here?
And I wish, even if they just baked it in, I wish they'd make it a little dark inside the tunnel. And there it emerges. Must be easy to uh, tunnel through this chalk. Please don't die. That was not the best executed maneuver ever. This is the worst frame rate in the entire map right here. I don't even want to check and see what it is. The rest of the map's pretty good, but right here at Dover, worst case. The new prop effects look pretty good. Everything except that hard line right there behind the prop on the spinner. They haven't controlled where our head can go yet, so like the VR people, we can stick our heads outside. No wind sound. What about on this side? Yep, same thing. That's nice, but obviously not realistic. Okay, let's try my first serious landing. Where's my airfield? I don't want to cheat and use the map. Let's look for it. I think that might be it over there. That's it. Boy, so this thing doesn't want to slow down. I gotta find out what those beeps are. Okay, so same way we took off, we're gonna land kind of like this. What appears to be the long way around. Our 
RPM all the way up for landing. Flaps or gear first? Also, what are the minimum speeds? Don't know. Flaps. Whoa, whoa. She's ballooning. Whoa, really ballooning with the flaps out. Might be realistic, might not be. Where'd my field go? Oh, there's the, the engines of the mind of their own again. Okay, and gear. Speed, good. We're gonna come right over these trees. Put her down. Oh, and let's. Trimming right, good. One twenty five, one twenty. Oh, God. Hey, that wasn't bad. Oh, a little bouncy. <laughs> oh, look, it'll P forty seven skid. Well, we can walk away. Yeah, had I known this was going to be Spitfire Part 2, I might not have bought it at all. Not not just bought it early, but I wish I could get my money back for the Spit. It's two big disappointments now for pretty much the same reasons. I'll, I'd be willing to bet serious money that the exact same people worked on both these products. And ED's hype says, this is the new standard for Warbirds. Well, that's the same thing they said when the P-47 came out. And the P-47 is ten times, like maybe a hundred times better than this. So, uh, yeah, I hope this isn't the new standard for Warbirds. Next time, we'll try weapons, but uh, here I'm in the aerobotics online server and uh, weapons are prohibited.